Welcome to the sun-drenched tropical paradise of Isle Delfino. We're so pleased to welcome you to our beautiful home. Come enjoy a natural wonderland to which we've added the world's finest resort facilities, a spectacular amusement park, and succulent seafood. Whoa. All this and more await you on Isle Delfino. Come relax and let us refresh your body and spirit. Isle Delfino truly is a premier destination, and Delfino Plaza might be one of the best hub worlds in video game history. So what is it about Delfino Plaza that makes it so special? Before going over my thoughts about Super Mario Sunshine's Delfino Plaza, I think it's important to look at the first 3D game in the Super Mario series. It's me, Mario! Finally, for the first time, we were able to jump into a 3D world with Mario, which truly was phenomenal for its time. Peach's castle, though, was pretty much a barren wasteland, and sure, it fit with the story, but it's impossible not to feel just alone in this world, and there really wasn't much going on besides a few toads hopping up and down and just being able to jump into painting, so the world was pretty limited. But jump back into Delfino Plaza and you have this vibrant, colorful world full of piantas enjoying their beautiful island. Now most of you who have played Super Mario Sunshine do know that it doesn't start off as sunshine and roses, but one of the best parts about Delfino Plaza is the world around you evolves as you progress further and further and collect more shine sprites to bring sunlight back to Delfino Plaza. That constant reminder of accomplishment is a huge part of what makes this hub world feel so alive. Don't get me wrong, I love Super Mario 64, and the world for its time was pretty fleshed out, but the team behind Super Mario Sunshine really went above and beyond to bring us something unique. In Super Mario 64, it really always just felt like a video game to me. But when I popped in Super Mario Sunshine for the first time, I really felt like I was going on an actual vacation. It was really cool to see all the NPCs running around Delfino Plaza, whether it was Piantas or Toads, and being able to interact with all of them, including some really funny dialogue, sometimes even relatable to what was going on in the game, was very refreshing. I always really enjoyed passing by the fruit stalls on the side of the plaza, clearly seeing some Piantas trying to take advantage of some tourists passing by their beautiful island. But the constant hustle and bustle really made it feel like there were other stories going on, other events taking place as you played through the game. The backgrounds in Super Mario Sunshine are really well done. It was always cool looking up at the Pianta statue right in front of the spawn point, with the massive volcano in the back looking like it's ready to erupt at any second. On the left side of the plaza, you could also see Rico Harbor and Pina Park in the distance, which really made it feel like all the worlds were connected as one. And while this is a common feature in many of the worlds to make them feel all interconnected, it truly was a very important addition to the hub world, making it seem like it was just a boat trip away to get through different parts of the island. And another great landmark was the giant red cannon that would launch you over to Pina Park. All these locations in the distance really just pushed my need for exploration. And although the boats were kind of slow, they were always moving around the plaza, which always made it feel like some sort of traveling was always happening. Another landmark on the far right side, the lighthouse, was used for traveling to another world through the paint on it. Just like the statue and the cannon, it served a purpose and it was a great looking landmark to boot. It would also be criminal not to mention the underground sewers that would lead around the entire plaza and hold some secrets like coins and shortcuts. The throwback change in music too? 
That was just the pure love and attention to detail that Nintendo was bringing. All the blue coins hidden was also a nice touch because you could bring it back to the plaza and trade them in for shine sprites to further help your cause and reward your hard work. Flood, Mario's multi-purpose water pack that he received from Professor E. Gad, added an extra layer of discoveries to be made and fun to be had. I also really appreciated the Delfino emergency broadcast system alerts that would kind of give you subtle hints that something was happening in the plaza or a new world was open for you to explore. And besides all that, Delfino Plaza is just lovely to look at. The tropical palm trees and relaxing crystal clear water make up a bustling sea town surrounded by sandy shores. Isle Delfino and Delfino Plaza in particular are a destination that you feel like you want to visit as much as possible. It truly was a breath of fresh air in the 3D Mario series, and it was one of the best looking Nintendo games at the time I had ever played. A hub world that felt larger than life that really left an impression on me that years later I'm still thinking about revisiting. Delfino Plaza is a masterpiece. Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I have baked a cake for you. You're truly Princess Toadstool. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Um, if you guys could go out and drop a like, a comment, let me know if I missed anything about Delfino Plaza that, that makes it special to you. I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to talk about it. Um, also, dropping a subscription is free. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you know, maybe I'll bring out more content like this in the future. I really enjoyed doing this. So let me know. All the support helps. Thank you, guys.